too expensive, had to leave LA So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate Playing poker every day Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet We've been in Texas for over a month now, it's time to start moving east and make the 8 hour drive over to New Orleans and pick up my two friends along the way. Our first stop on the list, Bourbon Street. Not really my scene, but we gotta do it once. We see some girls getting smothered by a huge snake, go to the second floor of a bar and crash a couple's intense makeout session, and then do a little dancing of our own. The next morning we get beignets from the famous Café du Monde and eat them out by the Mississippi River. We then head over to a graveyard and fun fact, they're above ground for a reason due to the flooding. Check it out. We then stumble past the German Cultural Center, of course on our way to get the best mufaleta and andouille sausage at Kushan Butcher. What would a weekend in New Orleans be without going to a Saints game? Check out the Superdome. Inside, we get to our seats and the atmosphere is amazing. We then finesse our way down into the $500 seats and as you can see, we're clearly pumped. <laughs> We get a who dat chant going, but it's short lived. The dirty birds of Atlanta get the job done, but that's not gonna damper our mood. We walk out the stadium past a wedding over to Drago's and order the grilled oysters, which were phenomenal. Time to play some poker though. We head over to Harrah's into the 1 3 game for $400. First hand of the night, I look down at ace four of spades from the small blind. The $5 button straddles on and I pop it up to $20. Only the button finds a call, so we're going heads up to the flop. With $43 in the pot, the flop comes ace 10 nine with one spade. Two diamonds on board, we have top pair. Pretty good hand, the action's on me. I go for a c-bet here of half pot and the opponent folds, so we're gonna take down the first hand of the night. About an hour goes by of me raising pre and having to fold on the flop or the turn. I end up having to top up for $200 more. We look down at our next hand, queen 10 of spades and there's 540 in our stack. I'm on the button and I raise it up to $15. The player in the small blind who's belligerently drunk puts in the call. The big blind who's our buddy Ben also puts in the call so we're going three ways to the flop. With $45 in the pot, the flop's pretty good for us. It comes 10-5 deuce with two diamonds. I'm on the button so I have last action. The small blind and Ben both check it over to me. I think this is a mandatory bet here from the button. I bet out for $15. We can get value from any flush draws and one pair type hands. The small blind puts in the call. Ben puts in the call as well, so we're still three ways to the turn. Turn's not a great card, it comes to seven of diamonds. So when the action checks to me for a second time, I decide to check behind here, not looking to get check raised and into a gross spot. If there's no diamond on the river, I'll go for another bet for value. Unfortunately though, the dealer has other plans. Putting the jack of diamonds out there, four diamonds on board, any diamond is gonna have me crush. But the action checks over to me, giving me food for thought. Should I turn my pair of tens into a bluff here? Trying to get a small diamond to fold? I think better of it, and check behind and unfortunately for me the belligerently drunk guy turns over 5-4 offsuit however the 4 of diamonds is good enough to take down this $90 pot. Hard for me to say though if I would have gone for like a $45 to $60 bet there on the river he might have just looked down at his card seen the diamond and put in the call so maybe we saved some money there on the river but doesn't feel good going over 2 in New Orleans. Real quickly two quick announcements to make if you're in Chicago I'm having a meetup game on Wednesday December 29th that's just 4 days from now come out to Rockford Charitables the information will be down below Below. If you're in Los Angeles, January 6th is my meetup game with Lexo Poker at The Hustler. That'll be a lot of fun, so definitely come out to both of those if you're in the area. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button for me one time, and let's get into the next hand. We're trying to change up the mojo. I look down at King Queen of Diamonds and I raise it up to $15. The cutoff and the big blind both find a call, so we're going three ways to the flop. Out of position, but the flop's a decent one for us. We have two overs and a straight draw. Jack
Jack 107 Rainbow. The big blind leads out for $15, which is definitely a strange situation. I never understand when people donk out into the preflop razor, but that's a situation we're in and I decide to put in the call. The cutoff does as well and the turn comes the king of clubs, giving us top pair to go along with our straight draw. The big blind does not slow down even though he gets called in both spots. He bets out now for $20. Nothing for me to do other than just call here. I think a raise would just be kind of spewy. I toss in the $20 which brings in the cutoff and we're off to the river which comes the deuce of spades. Really shouldn't change too much so when the big blind leads out for $40 and bets on all three streets, he's representing a set two pair type of hand. I'm not going to be raising here with my one pair although I do block ace queen being the nuts. When he leads out for 40 I find a call. The cutoff gets out of the way and unfortunately for us we're over three because the big blind turns over jack 10. Not a great spot but happy I didn't go for a raise on the turn or the river. We're stuck $170 in the session. Nothing's been going right so far, so we got to put in the table change and change up the mojo once again. 350 in my stack, and I look down at pocket nines from middle position. Sounds like a good situation to put in the raise to $15. The cutoff finds a call, so we're going heads up to the flop. Flop comes queen, nine, five, bang. Finally, something good happens for us. We flop middle set. Draw heavy board, some straight and flush ideas out there. So I lead out for $15 into the $34 pot, and the cutoff finds a call. When the turn comes the jack of close, Clubs, although it does bring in 10-8 and king-10 for the straights, I don't really think that's going to connect too much with the opponent's calling range. I don't really think there's too much to consider here. I decide to go all in for around $50 effective. Unfortunately, that's all the cutoff had behind. If he has a draw, if he has a pair, he's just going to have to put in his money. Fortunately though, he finds a fold, but it's nice to finally take down a pot, even though it's just $64. <laughs> If I'm not winning money, at least other people in the casino are. That clip you just saw was a lady winning $25,000 playing slots. We need to try to make up the money we've lost. I top back up for $200 more and we look down at King Jack of Hearts with $550 now in our stack. We're in the big blind and there's a few limps to me. I try to raise it up to $17 but forget to grab three red chips so my bet is only $12. Hence, three people are going to find a call for that great price. We're going four ways to the flop. Flop comes six, three, three with two hearts. Pretty good flop all considered even though there might be some threes in their calling range. Given the fact that we're four ways here and out of position I decide to start with a check. The action checks around to the cutoff who goes for a $10 bet. Pretty small here and considering we just have king high I decide to go for the check raise. A I can pile more money in so if we get called we can improve on the turn in the river potentially win a large double up pot and B if he folds right now we're just going to win this pot with king high. Seems like a win win situation so I pop it up to $35. The $10 bet from the cutoff looked weak and it was he decides to muck his cards we're stuck two hundred dollars now in the session but we're going in the right direction what's up you guys mid-session update here at harris we ran into ben he spotted us here at harris i didn't know i was going to play after the new orleans game but i'm happy to run into him you guys really like the small business owner that i did up in dallas well ben here he runs a tour group in new orleans if you watch the intro all those things i did today were recommended by ben so huge shout out to you man i really appreciate it yeah, my how long have you uh lived in new orleans and uh Born and raised, business. man. Born and raised all my life. So in the tour uh, group, how long have you been doing that? We've been uh, about ten years now, and I've been doing the private tours for about three, three and a half years. So that's super uh, cool. So if you guys are ever in New Orleans, come by and stop by Harris. Come mix it up here. Great property, and then hit up Ben. I'll put the link down below if you want his tour group. Come support a local business. As always, Ben. Thank you. Sweet man. Thank you so much. Let's go back into the hands. With six hundred dollars in our stack, we're on the button, and we look down at Ace Ten offsuit. Middle position opens the action to ten dollars. Now I'm going to be putting in the three bet here to $30 which brings in the big blind and the middle position initial raiser. We're going three ways to the flop and we definitely need this one if we have any hopes of turning the session around. It looks like the dealer put out just what we asked for ace deuce four with two diamonds. Having top pair is great but it's also great when both the opponents check it over to me. I put in a one third pot size bet for $30. Big blind gets out of the way but middle position finds a call going heads up to the turn which comes a seven of clubs. Really shouldn't change too much if he has a draw. He's probably going to continue here on the turn as 
as well. So when he checks it over to me, I need to go for a second street of value. I'm going to cut out some red chips. Effective bet is $45 if he wants to continue, which he does. He obliges and puts in the call for 45 more. In the river comes a three of spades. Like the turn, this card shouldn't change too much. He's probably calling me with a weaker ace or a flush draw. So when he checks it over to me for a third time, I debate betting or I debate checking. If I bet here, there's $240 in the pot. I'd probably go somewhere in the neighborhood of $150. It's unlikely though that he'd call me with an worse ace that doesn't have me beat. Additionally, the flush draws are probably just going to fold. So I decide that $240 is enough to play for here with one pair. I check behind and lucky for me that I do because the opponent somehow turns over five deuce of hearts right away. I don't even turn over my cards. He just exposes them. He just exposes them knowing that he's good. He probably should have gone for a bet there having considering the fact he rivered the straight just my luck and how the night is going. He's going to take down that $241 pot. The only good news for me is that I didn't go for another bet on the river was definitely going to be facing a check jam. But with our tail between our legs, we're on to the next hand. Last hand of the night, let's end this on a good note. I look down at 6-4 offsuit from the button. The under the gun raises it up to $12 and there's two callers to me. Now you're probably thinking 6-4 offsuit is definitely just a muck. However, we're on the button, we're stuck a good amount of money and there's two callers to me, giving me a decent price. Prefer if it was suited. However, I'm going to be putting in the $12 here, looking for an Andrew Nimi favorable flop. $72 in the pot and that's exactly what comes. 10-6-6, bang, we flop three of a kind. The under the gun razor leads out for $25. Actions on me, not going to be scaring him off here. I just decide to flat call the other two opponents fold, which is unfortunate, but we're heads up to a turn, which gives us a boat. It comes a four of clubs. Finally, some good news for us, and he makes our day even better by shoving all in. He only has $55. Go figure. Snap call incoming from me. I put in a stack of reds. The river is an inconsequential five of hearts. Under the gun proudly shows pocket jacks, but sorry, sir. It's finally my time to shine. I turn over the boat. We're taking down that $240 pot. With that being said, I'm cutting my losses here. I'm glad to win the last hand of the night. I rack up my chips and head to the cage. All right, you guys, that does it from our 1-3 session here in New Orleans. Got into that game for 400. At the top up twice for 200, so in for 800. Out for a $276 loss in four and a half hours. Just a grindy session. We didn't get much going. But had some fun, met some cool people, and uh, obviously did all those cool things thanks to Ben. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below. Next video should be a home game with LSU students. Should be really fun. Gonna get some cool drone shots of that. Be sure to check that out, subscribe, share this with a friend. Are you ready, LSU? Let's go! Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.